This is the June Palette Full Packs box. I'm very excited to open it up, find out what's inside, and then draw something with it. <laughs> Let's do that. It was a baloney. <laughs> I think these are sponges. Oh, those are really soft. And they're creepily close to my skin tone. <laughs> and then these look like little fingernails. And I don't even know where I got this. Did I pull this out of there? These look like the same shape as this. Can you like... It's like a little sock. There we go. So these are micropore sponges. Reusable, non-abrasive, and versatile. So this is called a sponge bar. These are the knife covers, as I figured out. <laughs> and then this one that looks like a piece of bologna. Called the angle slice. The next thing I see... This is a two color set of pan pastels. Pan pastel. Apply like pastel, color like paint. Ooh, those are pretty colors right there. Wait, you can do something like this? <laughs> this is like a little pamphlet and it lists all the colors that this brand has available. Ooh, instructions. Give me a second. Ooh, you can like mix colors. Wait, these are erasable? I didn't have very much luck with. Ooh. The last time I used regular pastels, I had no luck getting it. Oh my gosh. Or to an erase. But it says that these are fully erasable with any eraser. I need to try this right now. Do you see how vibrant these colors are? And the way they like connect together, like we can put yellow. <laughs> that is nifty. They just rubby rub a dub. Ooh. Oh, it just keeps on going. Wow. And this says it's erasable. Let me try that. I mean, it smudges a little, but it also erases. How do you clean this? Jeez. The pigment just keeps on going. Let's try a different sponge. Jeez, look, that's like so vibrant. Okay, it doesn't look quite as vibrant. And then you can like blend it out. That's gonna kill my wrist. I think. Let's try blending it. Get some green. So this one is called Hansa Yellow, I think. And then this one is ultramarine blue. And then they screw together. <laughs> How fascinating. Imagine you had like a whole stack of these. Let's see what else we've got. We've got, we have some primary colored mini pastels. Pastels are not something. Oh, hey, look. This feels gross. Let me see. Here we've got the green, we got another yellow. This one's a bit golder. Red and a blue. But those you should be able to get any color you want because that's a primary set. If you're willing to do the blending. Also, oh, and there's a grayscale set. Compressed chalk. Oh, this one's not labeled. How unfortunate. Poor quality control. So we have a white. Does this show up on top of these? Oh, maybe use it to blend. Yeah, okay, so white's probably used more for blending. Then we have a gray, a darker gray. Ooh, yes, black. That one seems to work the best. So like these ones, I feel like it doesn't leave as rich of a pigment. You can see the paper through it. Where's that black? It just, ooh, I think that's straight charcoal. That's probably why. <laughs> yeah, and the white seems very similar to the black. Ooh, that's interesting. Where I put the white, it's not sticking as well when I rub over it. Oh, fascinating. What am I doing? <laughs> Let's see what else is in the box. Looks like we have a sheet of, is this like velvet paper? Oh my gosh, I am making a mess. I don't know if you can tell the texture, but it's almost like velvety. What is this called? Oh, it's velour. An eight by 10 velour board. Unless you're a dedicated pastel artist, this is probably a surface you have never tried before. Bingo, you got me. I am not a dedicated pastel artist. That definitely does have a unique sound. Wow, I'm kind of excited to uh, draw on this velour paper. And finally, last thing in the box, the Strathmore Pastel Paper, acid-free, heavyweight, 24 sheets. Oh, they're all different colors. Is that just how it's always sold? It doesn't mention that it's got different colors in it. So maybe pastel paper always comes with multiple tones like that. Drawing on this black surface is gonna be very different compared to like drawing on these lighter tones. Cause I was thinking, oh, we can sketch on some of this paper and then do our final drawing on the velour. 
but it's just gonna be so different. I wonder if there's even a point. I kind of have this weird feeling of drawing this character in my style. Let's do the pink. Pink paper. Wow, I ripped it right at the end, didn't I? I really want to try out this paper, but I am not ready for that yet. How are we supposed to do this? Because the problem I had last time I used pastels was it didn't stick to the pencil. So I had these weird super gray spots that were really gross. <laughs> so no to the graphite. But the other problem is if I try to use these, these don't seem to work that well together either. Like this one didn't smudge on top of the white pastel. So I'm nervous about this. I'm gonna just try drawing in red. We obviously don't want to get too detailed because these are the art supplies we're working with. Let's just try and uh, sketch something. Be light about it. Should I try and draw this character? This individual? I don't know if that's a real person. That's a drawing, so it could be a real person. Why not? I got nothing else going on right now. <laughs> and she got like a heart. Is that a heart? You know, it's really hard to say. I'm gonna make mine a heart. Oh, she looks so angry. No, what did I do? What did I do? You can't even see her ear. So I uh, guess it's up to me. It'll be somewhere in there. <laughs> now I'm just gonna like sort of add some of these dark tones in lightly to see how it kind of looks before I like go in with some of the heavier art supplies. I'm, like smudge this with my finger. Oh, that's right. Kind of can. But yeah, keep it light and then we'll build up the tones because I don't want to like lose the highlights obviously. And then hopefully, maybe I can like sharpen this and get some really fine details with the black. Fix that eye, cause like, there's obviously some problems here. <laughs> I am missing out on the pretty factor. That got lost in translation. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I can uh, get some of that back. I literally have no idea what I'm, when it comes to pastels. So I'm trying to like imitate this because that's something that was created with pastels. So obviously it's possible. <laughs> Hope you don't mind, Susan. Oh, I probably should be using the sponge, shouldn't I? Can't forget that earringy thing. Oh, it's also like really dark over here. That way these highlights pop. Oh, I see. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing it all in this red, and then I'm hoping to use maybe the black on top of it, and then some of the colors maybe. Oh, would this yellow look really nice as a highlight? I don't know, we also wanna use like the paper maybe. Yeah, that was fun to experiment with at least. I don't think it, now that I'm trying it out, I'm like, yeah, that's probably not how I should go about that. Because the paper obviously is a lighter tone than this yellow. So it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Let's move on to this black. Take a good look at what this looks like because I'm probably going to destroy it. But that's what we do here. Ugh, that makes her look like she's just like, bleh. Like, <laughs> this one, the mouth just looks sort of like slightly ajar and then mine, she's like, zombie, bleh. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Just darken up this a little. Kind of remove that harsh edge I made. Let's just use my smudgies. That's the wrong one. I'm like, I can tell instantly. It doesn't draw as softly as this one does. It's kind of interesting. The colors are definitely muddy. And then the other problem I'm going to have is if I'm going to use this dark paper, obviously this isn't going to show up. I can't even like recreate this if I wanted to. Just not possible. This thing's really nice because it like saves your wrist because you don't have to like hold a tiny little tool. This does smudge really nicely. My illustration definitely looks older than the reference drawing there. So like you put it down, smudge it, and then you can put it down for some more contrast. Smudge out the edge here. Don't use color for highlights is what I learned. No! But now I can actually use this broken piece and only stick out like a little bit of it. And then maybe I won't have to worry about it breaking. Hey, I'll take it. I don't hate this, but what I like about it has nothing to do with the art supplies. Woo, so messy. <laughs> I'm definitely finding the black pastel the easiest to work with. I'm not entirely sure how to like incorporate the colors. So let me grab a new sponge here and then here's the blue don't these colors remind you of a macaw aren't they like blue and yellow i kind of just want to go for it well let me try and draw a bird first let me see if i actually know what they look like let's see they have like a curly beak i believe this like part of the beak is really small and then this side's big and then they have like an eyeball that's like right here so like this part's black 
this part's yellow, this part's yellow, and then this part here is all blue. Not as vibrant as hopefully it'll look on the black paper. I can try to like stylize him more. Maybe more like this. <laughs> it looks so much more buff. Big buff boy here. Let's move to this paper. Get these guys out and try this. I feel like I'm going in kind of blind. The only way to learn is to try, right? So <laughs> let's go for it. Should I use the red again? What does the red look like on here? Okay, it's kind of slightly visible. Let me try this gray. Well, the gray might work. How do I want to go about this? Should we do just the head? Ooh, then we can do more details than like that. The weird liney section around their eyes. But I also still want to like keep it kind of um, stylized. It looks a little too much like a puffin. Yeah, I'm changing my mind. Can you erase on velour? Not really. Let's see. Put the head here. Try by starting with the neck. Then the head's here. Then we have its beak. Ooh, that's actually really helpful. Because I always draw the neck too short. And then the whole thing looks janky. There we go. I don't know. I don't think that's showing up on camera at all. That's so just going to look cool when I start adding the colors in the right spots. Since, uh, yeah, you can't see all this groundwork I'm laying. Now, there are some parts on this bird that are actually white. So why don't I try to do that? Where's my, uh... There it is. Try and lay some of this down first. Ooh, see, that's actually working on this paper way nicer. It's like it was meant to work on this paper. A couple layers of this, maybe. Around the eyes as well. Kind of hard to get like an even tone of color. Some spots definitely look grayer than others. All right, next up, let's do the yellow and then blue and then the green because blue and yellow make green. And this is yellow currently, so. Rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. <laughs> a little excited about this. Like that, and then it comes down this way. Velour paper does take off a lot more pigment faster, so I have to like keep dipping for more. Ooh, it's almost like a feathers. It looks a little furry instead of feathery. <laughs> so maybe I'll have to blend it out a bit more. All right, we can maybe come back to that. I'm going to switch this out to a completely different one for now to use with the blue. I just don't want to have to worry about mixing the color yet. I'm just not ready for that kind of commitment. All right, move over to the blue. We can start maybe here, because this is going to like go to green as we get closer to the beak. Oh, that does look pretty cool, doesn't it? It's hard to cover large areas with this though. That's a downside. I feel like I'm drawing with makeup. <laughs> I'm getting really excited to do the green part. I can't wait. I'll try and do longer strokes here. I'll try and imitate the feathers. How's that looking? Get these a little shorter down here. Some more short ones here. It's interesting. It's a little too dark in this section, but I don't want to like lose these longer feathers. Maybe I can just keep picking up more and extending it higher up. I'm gonna grab this sponge in the yellow and see if I can even this out a bit more. Ooh, I haven't even used this thing yet. I've been neglecting the baloney sponge. There we go, there's a nice even. And then, oh shoot. <laughs> I don't wanna switch sponges, but if I like, if I can even out this color, then the dream would be that I can use this thing with this and get some like feather textures up near the breast pec section. All right, back to the blue. Then I'm gonna have to like highlight over here to make that beak stand out from the page. I'm not sure what color. We could try green, but I don't know. All right, let's move back to the yellow sponge. Ah, oh, shoot, I just ripped straight through him. All right, anyway, let's grab some yellow and try and make green. There we go, there we go. Should have mixed that in a separate place first. Or just doing it right on the canvas was the right choice. Hey, looks pretty green to me. Maybe add a little bit of green here. No, does that make sense? Oh, and then I wanted to, hopefully there's not too much blue on this. I wanted to add some feather texture here. Just like quickly dab and pull like this. That looks pretty cool actually. Go in with more white maybe and just 
fill in maybe a highlight. Oh, wrong one. I made the mistake. Yeah, maybe I'll just fill in this area with a light bit of white. And the white doesn't blend as much as I want it to. Might add just a smidge of white back here too. Then blend that out. Hey, it looks like there's a spotlight on him. I wonder, can I use the black? Oh. And like detail any of this. Oh, see the black draws on this velvet paper so nice, but it does not draw over top of the yellow very easily. I also add some like feather texture along the edge of this yellow. Maybe even pull this white up a little higher. On camera, it's so blown out. I can't really tell what I should be doing. First and I'm like, oh, so many things I need to fix. Feathers, subtle feather textures. I think it needs a little bit more blue. Right here. All right, after using these a little bit more, I have a new assessment when it comes to pastels as an art supply. And uh, I think the reason I don't like them as much is they're kind of difficult to control and they require a lot of blending, which isn't something you see as often in like a cartoony art style like mine. I really like flat colors and cell shading, even though I've been kind of branching out a little bit more lately. But with pastels, you obviously even tones are very difficult to get and blending is kind of their function. So I think that's why me and them just don't get along as well as some other art supplies do. Cause the way to use them properly is so different from what my normal art tends to look like. And that makes sense. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's obviously why I don't gravitate towards them. I'll just add one last thing here. Just like subtle grassiness, leafs, leaves of the trees, the greenery. Just to give the illusion that there's some kind of background here. Grab a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, a little bit more yellow. Just greenify the background. I bet you pastel artists have a lot less angst pent up inside them. Look at this. Therapy! <laughs> there we go. I think I'm all done with this. I don't hate the way it looks. That velvety paper though. Ooh, I wish I could show you how soft it is. I want to thank you guys for watching and I also want to send a big thank you to Powerful Packs for sending me this month's box to try out and to share with you guys. If you're interested in getting your own Powerful Packs, I will have a link in the description where you can learn more information about them and see if it's something that might be right for you. If not, I'm also going to be giving away this box and all of these art supplies and I'm going to do my best to wash these first. <laughs> so if you'd like to enter that giveaway, you can check the link in the description and uh, yeah, good luck with that. Thank you guys for watching. I'll uh, see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.